Stuck here for a second or two. All right. Now, as we get rolling along, uh, we're actually going to go underneath the bridge. It is very, very low. So even if you're short, shorter than I am, and I'm pretty short, do not stand up. But I'll let you know when we get there. And when we cross the Golden Gate Bridge, don't worry about the toll. I know it's 975, but don't worry about it. Uh, but it is very low as well, so don't stand up. I'll let you know when we get to both of those places. Anyway, this large hilly section here known as the uh, Marin Headlands, uh, very large to take up a, a pretty large percentage of the Northern Bay area here. Uh, they actually take up about 70% of Marin County, the county we're in right now, as well as parts of Napa and Sonoma. Now, I mentioned the Native Americans, the Ohlone's, on this side of the bay, the North Bay, it was the Emooks. They hunted and farmed this area up about as far north as where Bodega Bay sits today. Great little fishing village. Kind of looks the same today as it did 100 years ago, so it's untouched. And if you're an Alfred Hitchcock fan, uh, the movie The Birds was filmed there in Bodega Bay. And uh, that old building in that movie uh, is still there in Bodega Bay today. Now, if you were to follow Alexander Ave all the way down, uh, it would actually take you right into Sausalito. And uh, Sausalito is actually where Otis Redding got the idea for the lyrics uh, for sitting on the dock of the bay. All right, so we're uh, approaching this bridge. And again, it is very, very, very low. Uh, so please do not stand up uh, while we go under it. You'll, you'll see what I mean. And uh, there's a set of trees just on the other side of the bridge that we go under. Uh, they're very low as well. With it being a little windy here today, uh, just keep in mind with them. So you'll see what I mean. This, this is actually a knuckle scraper, this is. If you think I'm kidding, wait. Say what? I, I wasn't kidding here, was I? Yeah, stay a little low. Stay a little low. Just keep low, keep low. Yeah. So now you know why I don't want you standing up on the bus. Uh, the toll booth, it's just as low as well, but I'll let you know when we get to it. And. Uh, we're going to cross the Golden Gate Bridge. This bridge itself is 1.7 miles long. Uh, we're about 250 feet above the water as we cross this bridge. And there's about 110,000 cars per day that use this bridge. Now it's Sister Bridge, the Bay Bridge there, takes you from our city into Oakland. Uh, it's about 7 miles long. And roughly about 240,000 cars per day use that bridge. However, here's an interesting fun fact. I mentioned earlier that both of these bridges were being built at the same time. Uh, the Bay Bridge, even though it's a lot longer, it's actually older by about six months. It actually opened first. All right, and as we get under the North Tower here on our right, you're gonna see our wonderful Pacific Ocean. Uh, it's the largest ocean in the world as well. And uh, I'm actually going to turn my microphone off for a short second here while we go over this uh, bridge. Uh, the wind sometimes on the Pacific Ocean side uh, interferes with my mic and uh, does a little havoc with the speakers. 
And again, there's our beautiful Pacific Ocean out there. Hey, look at that. The ocean's waving at you out there. Look at all those waves. All right, I'm going to turn my mic off here. You'll see that bank of fog right there, which usually it's over top of this bridge. I've been on this bridge many a times and you can't even see the bridge uh, when you're actually on it. I'll let you later on know what that, that sound is on that bridge here in a sec. You can actually hear it on a windy day all the way into Sausalito. And uh, we're now coming up to our uh, toll booth. Again, very low, so do not stand up. Uh, this bridge never used to make that noise. Uh, they've done phase one of the retrofit. So after they did the retrofit, which means earthquake proof, uh, it started making that noise. Uh, when this bridge was completed in 1937, it came in at a cost of just a little over $30 million. Uh, getting back to the retrofit, the phase one came in at a cost of $1.7 billion. Uh, phase two, they say is going to be about $1.2 billion, but we know it's not going to be $1.2 billion. It's going to be higher. And again, we're going to go through the uh, toll booth here, which incidentally was $9.50 up to the first. Uh, they raised it a quarter. Lucky us. And just stay a little low. Stay a little low. All right. Now, we're actually going to go through a small section of our military barracks, the Presidio. Um, I got some great information to tell you about the Presidio. First of all, it was established by the Spaniards originally as a military fort. Uh, Back in 1776, uh, interesting date. Uh, it's as old as our country. We just had uh, the 4th of July weekend. Uh, this is also where the African-American soldiers known as the Buffalo Soldiers trained at. Before Yosemite ever became a national park, they actually trained there as well. It took them about a week to get from there to here. And uh, when President Roosevelt made it a national park. They actually helped the rangers out for about five years under Colonel George Young, first African-American colonel, third African-American to graduate out of West Point. And you'll see a corral down there. There's some horses. It's actually where the cavalry stayed at. This area and Golden Gate Park are still patrolled by mounted police. And coming up on our right-hand side, just past the tree line, uh, you're going to see a red brick building with four white chimneys. That is where General MacArthur lived out while he was stationed here. And to my extreme left, through the tree line, is our Memorial Veterans Cemetery. There are over 31,000 heroes at rest there. Stemming all the way back to the Mexican-Spanish War. And uh, we're going to go through the tunnel here. tell you this city's got all kinds of fun interesting stories and uh, I'm gonna point one out to you that uh, 
I like to think is in, in the top five. Anyway, there's a little body of water here on my left, and it's called Mountain Lake, although we all know it's about the size of a pond, but they call it Mountain Lake. A uh, little interesting, fun story uh, about uh, this little body of water. At Golden Gate Park, at the Academy of Sciences, uh, there's an aquarium there, and there's an albino alligator that lives there that goes by the name of Claude. Now, they found that alligator in that little body of water. Yeah, no, yeah, yes, and uh, thank God nobody got hurt, but uh, to this day, uh, nobody's too sure of really how it got there or who put it there. And I, I've been thinking about this for, for quite a while, and I, I've gotten together with some friends of mine, uh, and we've kind of come up with the concept of what we think might have happened. Now, as I get into this, I'm going to let everybody know I have zero evidence of this. Absolutely none. But I believe somebody bought it off of somebody when it was tiny, small, and cute. Yeah. As it got bigger, it grew teeth. It got bigger, and yes, bigger, and whoever owned it uh, realized that, well, maybe owning a pet alligator wasn't the smartest thing they ever did, and without getting any other people involved and asking and answering a lot of questions about why you have an alligator, I believe with the help of some friends, uh, they probably released it in that little body of water in the middle of the night just to get rid of it. Uh, like I said, no, thank God nobody got hurt. Uh, but it now makes its home at the Academy of Sciences. Now, I also realize our city's not that warm. That little body of water is not that deep. So at certain times of the year, uh, people actually use that little body of water to go swimming in. Now, it's not that warm, but it's warmer than the bay, definitely warmer than the ocean. But I know when they found that alligator there, uh, it took about a good year before anybody would actually dip their toes in there. They were wondering if there was maybe more than one alligator there. But uh, yeah, if you go to the Academy of Sciences, uh, you'll be able to see Claude there. All right. Uh, speaking of the Academy of Sciences, uh, our next stop will be Golden Gate Park. We're not quite there yet, but uh, that'll be our next stop. Yeah, another interesting thing about Mount Lake, um, a lot of people don't realize the majority of our city is built right over top of water. Uh, that's the only natural freshwater lake we have left in our city. All the rest have been uh, landfilled in. Um, our downtown, where all those high rises are built, was our bay at one time. Uh, our bay was a lot larger. All right. And uh, we're going to make a left here onto Geary Street here. And Geary Street's, uh, it's named after our very first mayor, uh, Mayor Geary, back when we became a state in 1850. Um, it also happens to be the longest street in our city. Uh, basically starts right there at Union Square where Macy's is. If you were to follow it west, uh, it literally takes you to the Pacific Ocean. If you were to go any farther, you definitely get wet. So it, it takes you right to the ocean. Um, our city as well, we're really not that big at all. We're only around 49 square miles, so we're 7 by 7 miles. And our population, very small. Uh, we're just a little over 800,000. All right, so we're going to make a right here. Just hang on as we get around the corner here. And uh, that large forested area there, straight ahead of us, that is Golden Gate Park. Uh, the park itself uh, is about a half a mile wide by three miles long. Uh, it's a little over 1,100 acres. Uh, it's just a bit smaller than our military barracks, the Presidio. 
Uh, for you folks on my right, uh, there is a tree there we may have to go under. Just may want to kind of tuck it in a bit, just be aware of my side. Uh, at the end of this year, uh, this park will be 153 years old. Uh, put that in perspective, it's only three years older than our cable cars, which is pretty amazing. Uh, the two people that helped build and design this park, Mr. William Hall, and a gentleman from Scotland, uh, and his name is John McLaren. Uh, this park as well was actually built right over top of sand dunes. Again, watch yourself on my right, right here. You should be all right, but just be aware. Now, the interesting thing about this park, uh, we're very lucky we have it because with it being built on sand dunes, a lot of people really did not think that Mr. McLaren would get it done. Uh, in this park, I'll be honest with you, without the help of Netherlands, would be definitely a lot smaller today or quite possibly not even here at all. Uh, they gave us a big hand with this park. Uh, they gave us two windmills, uh, the Queen Widemere windmill in 1903 and the Murphy in 1905. And the reason we needed those windmills, again, the Pacific Ocean, salt water, you cannot use it to irrigate. Uh, this is the home of the Academy of Sciences, uh, the Japanese Tea Gardens, uh, the De Young Museum, uh, the Conservatory of Flowers, as well as the Botanical Gardens. Now, uh, right where the band shell there is in the middle of the park uh, is also the Japanese Tea Gardens. Uh, the Japanese Tea Gardens and the band shell, uh, the music concourse were put into this park uh, back in, during the Midwinter Exposition uh, in 1898. And uh, I'll tell you an interesting thing about the park. If you go to the music concourse where the band shell is, there's a bunch of benches where you can sit down at. If you're lucky enough, uh, when you're on one of the benches, look underneath of it, and it'll be stamped Golden Gate Park. If you see one that's stamped Midwinter Exposition, uh, those are the original benches that they brought in for the Midwinter Exposition in 1898. I think there's only about two or three of them left but there's there's still a few and again does anybody need to get off at Golden Gate Park check out Claude or the benches or the Japanese tea gardens all right so I do have a stop for Golden Gate Park uh, Levine and we're gonna make a left here and again keep your eye on my right here we may have to go underneath these trees they, they are a little low with it being windy here today just may have to duck a bit duck 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 Yes, did I tell you about my pet duck? Took it shopping everywhere with me when I was a kid. When we got up to the cashier, I said, put it on my bill, put it on my bill. Terrible dad joke, huh? <laughs> yeah, uh, I'll be honest. Now, a couple of interesting things about this park. Uh, again, uh, this park, it actually has plant life growing in this park from six different continents. Uh, not bad, uh, considering there's only seven, so pretty well all of them. Uh, this park, as well as Central Park in New York City, are the two largest urban garden parks uh, in the country. And when Mr. McLaren opened this park up about 153 years ago, uh, buffalo were becoming extinct. So uh, Mr. McLaren actually raised buffalo in this park. And to this day, uh, we still have buffalo in the park. Uh, I, I can't remember the exact amount, but there's, there's about 12 or 15 buffalo. they got a pretty large area to roam around in. Uh, but those buffalo are original descendants of the original buffalo that Mr. McLaren introduced to this park uh, about 153 years ago. Um, I, I, I got an interesting story I'll tell you about the buffalo. Um, I'm going to say this is probably around 1982-84. Uh, it was the middle of my high school years beginning um, somebody actually released them 
And when you saw the buffalo, you know, they just stood around or were laying on the grass. You'd think they moved around fairly quickly, but let me tell you, uh, they'd be watching the news and nobody could come into this park for about a week, although people did come in. But those buffalo, they move fast, they move fast. Uh, right straight ahead there where you see them doing the painting on that cathedral, that is actually St. Ignatius. It's actually part of a Catholic school, our oldest school in the city. And the University of San Francisco is just on the other side of it, which is also a Catholic university. Uh, for you basketball fans, uh, the late, great Bill Russell uh, was actually alumni of USF. Actually got his two championships there, so many, many years ago. All right. Now, that hill that you're actually looking at right there, that is Twin Peaks. And uh, just on the other side of that hill is the Mission District. And uh, the Mission District is actually where Carlos Santana grew up at. And uh, Mr. McLaren actually worked at this park for a very, very long time. Uh, he finally retired at 95 years old. Pretty amazing. Pretty amazing. And Kizar Stadium is located here. Now, for you folks that may not be too familiar with Kizar Stadium, our football team, the 49ers, actually played at Kizar before they played at Candlestick Park. Uh, unfortunately, the stick is long gone. Uh, they now play down at Levi's Plaza in Santa Clara, which is just borders with San Jose, south of us. Uh, but keys are still there today. Um, since this light is red, um, an interesting story I'll tell you about keys are. Um, my parents uh, were not married yet. I, I wasn't even thought of yet, but uh, they were dating. And Elton John, his very first American appearance, uh, was at a club in L.A. called the Troubadour, which, which is still there today. Anyway, he did such a great job, they decided to do a California tour. Uh, one stop was at Fresno State, where the Bulldogs uh, are, go Bulldogs, and also Kizar Stadium. Now, back in those days, when you got a ticket stub, you would collect them in a shoebox. My dad collected all the ticket stubs. If I did not see this with my own eyes, I wouldn't believe it, but he, he saved them and he still had them. They're in a frame now. Those tickets that he bought for him and my mom, they were $3 a piece to see Elton John at Kizar. Uh, my dad was telling me it was so foggy there you couldn't even see the stage. So they only they stayed for about half and then left. All right, this is actually Hate Ashbury, uh, made famous in the 60s. Uh, this is where the Grateful Dead lived at. Uh, Janis Joplin, uh, Jimi Hendrix, Jefferson Airplane, uh, Sly from Sly and the Family Stone, uh, and lots of other musicians and local artists, although this area is really nothing much like it used to be. Now, does anybody need to get off here at Haight Ashbury? Show of hands for Hippy Dippyville. Anybody for Haight Ashbury? All right. Uh, some pretty good restaurants here. A uh, ton of vintage clothing stores here as well. Do you need to get off here? Okay, thank you. Yeah, well, I do have a stop. I do have a stop. And on my right, you're gonna see a mural. So somebody is getting off here, it'll be, uh, this mural is actually done by a local artist here in the Upper Hate Mel Waters. Uh, so you got Janice, George, John, and Joni Mitchell there. Uh, for you Canadians up here, Joni Mitchell from Canada. All right, here it is. Yes. 
Yes, it does. Somebody, somebody missing a key? Anybody else coming up? Got lots of room. Got an open bar. Disco light. All right. Now, on my left, where this red apartment building is with the mural up, Jimmy Hendrix. Yes, he lived here. Although, I'm going to give you some spoiler alerts here, folks. Talking to my dad, he only lived here for about six months and a lot of people say this is actually where he came up for the lyrics for the red house uh, don't don't be mad at the messenger but my dad told me when he lived here that apartment was not red okay so he may have but you know after you told me that i wonder all right we're gonna get around the corner here this is not on the map uh, I'm going to take you two blocks around this area. I grew up in this neighborhood. My dad grew up in this neighborhood, and so did my grandfather. So I'm going to show you a couple of things. Uh, here on my right, this pinkish apartment. This is actually where Janice Joplin lived. And we're not going to go all the way up Parnassus Hill, but on my left by this apartment complex. It's about the third house up. It's got the brown roof on it. That's where the Grateful Dead lived at. But what I really want to show you is the architecture in this part of town. Uh, right here on my right, we're going to have this wonderful yard sale. Uh, this building with the pointed roof like a birthday hat. Whenever you see that roof design, these are known as Queen Anne's. Uh, Queen Anne's were generally built in the late 1800s to early 1900s. Now I'm going to show you some painted ladies and some other older buildings. Again on my right. Check this out. These are also painted ladies. Now, aren't they gorgeous? The triangular shaped roof ones are Victorians, early 1800s. Now, this hill, Parnassus, if you look up any of the roads on this hill, you're going to see all these older buildings. Doesn't matter what hill you go up. Uh, the main reason this is, uh, when we had the 1906 earthquake, this area in the Mission District are the only two areas of the city that really were not affected by the 06 earthquake. There are actually over 3,100 older buildings in this area. <coughs> Sounds good. All right, now. We're going to come up to Central Street here, look down this hill, and on my left, you're going to see a row of houses, which are also painted ladies as well. Uh, we call these the wedding cake houses, so the entire one side of the street, they're all painted up like wedding cakes. Um, some people do call them the birthday cake houses. Um, I've always known them as the wedding cake houses, but tomato, tomato, it, it don't matter to me. They're kind of interesting. Now. These Queen Ants really took off in the 1890s because they actually came up with a way to take glass and were able to curve it in the 1890s. So you're going to see a set of Queen Ants here. On my right up this hill, the blue Queen Ant, you're going to notice that it has curved glass on it. It was built in the 1890s. Uh, these two in front of me uh, that do not have the curved glass on them uh, were not built in the 1890s just before. Uh, but their real boom uh, was generally in the 1890s when they came up with a way to curve glass. And we're going to make a left here. And on my left hand side, uh, you're going to see a set of buildings that have a flat roof on them. These are called flat sticks. These were generally built in the 1850s. And whenever you see a balcony above a door with a window in behind it, uh, we simply call that a, a Romeo and Juliet balcony. Kind of cute, although the ending of that play didn't turn out so cute. But uh. Now, 
in order to call it a painted lady, uh, it must have at least three to five colors on it, or over five. So I'm going to show you, uh, in my opinion, probably one of the prettiest painted ladies uh, in the city. And we're back on track now. I hope hope you folks didn't mind that little detour. If I had a little more time, I'd, I'd show you some more areas. Uh, it's the old Phelps building. Uh, it was built around 1861, and it's going to be on my right-hand side. Uh, it is also a flat stick, uh, but it's it's. I, I haven't counted all the colors, but I'm just guessing here. It's probably got 13 to 15. Uh, while I'm waiting for the light to change, uh, you'll see those flat sticks here across from the parking lot. They all originally had backyards. You see how they've added apartments onto the back end of them? Uh, one of the main reasons nobody in my family lives in this area, a, a one-bedroom apartment starts at 3500 in this area. So they took out the backyard to build apartments. All right, here it is, this beautiful flat stick. Isn't that gorgeous? The old Phelps building. Uh, that roof design, that is a Griffin-styled roof. This particular one is a bracketed-styled Griffin. Uh, the entire exterior of this building uh, is completely hand-carved all the way around. Pretty cool, huh? All right. Now, I got something interesting I'll show you. I don't normally get a chance to do this. This light is red, so uh, it'll give me some time to do it. Uh, where this apartment complex is, the building right behind it, if you look at the roof, you're going to see wooden peg uh, right on top of the roof. Uh, there's not too many of them left in the city like that anymore. Uh, over the years, a lot of storms eventually they get knocked over or rotted out. What that originally is, uh, if you were a captain of a ship, either in the Navy or Merchant Marines, uh, to let everybody know that there was a captain living in that building or owning it. That is part of a helm, the steering wheel of a tall ship. It's the wooden handles of a helm. Uh, as well, uh, you'll s very seldom see this as well. Uh, back in the 1850s when these flat sticks were originally being built, uh, about two and a half feet up along the top, they had metal railings, mostly for decoration, but during World War II, to help out with the military effort, they gave the metal railings to the military to melt down and help during wartime. All right, now we are coming up towards Alamo Square. Uh, if you do want to get off here, this is where uh, you'll see the painted ladies. If you do want to get off at Alamo Square, does anybody need to get off at Alamo Square? We're good? And uh, I'm okay up top here, uh, Labine. Boo -doo -boo. Like, you'll see this little flat stick. You see how they got the garden at top? Well, they've added that on later. That one's got a garden. I can't even fathom how much a month that is. <laughs> Doo -doo -ba -ba. Everybody having a good time? Yeah. Yeah. Awesome, awesome. Where's the painted lady's helmet? You got to get off and down. Straight up the show. You getting off here? Do do. All right, yeah, so you, you go straight up this hill. You'll see the bottom end of the park, just at the top of the park there. All right, I'm, I'm, I'm okay, I guess. Yeah, all right. Uh, this is uh, the Visadero. Uh, locals call it the Viz. Uh, pretty popular area for the younger crowd. A lot of watering holes here, restaurants.
All right, there you go. All right, um, yeah, we're good. All right, uh, again, we got this red light here. Um, again, this is more about me growing up in the city. Uh, this independent, this is actually a small concert hall. And um, I got a really cool story to tell you about this concert hall. Uh, again, I'm going to give away my age a little bit here. Um, my first year in high school, 1979. Uh, I've been in that building many a times in my younger days. It, it holds maybe 300 people. I've been in there when there's been way over 300. Uh, but I saw Metallica play there uh, when they were still a garage band. And uh, an interesting note, they just had an anniversary last year or the beginning of this year. So they actually played there, but there was no way you were going to get a ticket. Tickets, if you could get them, uh, they were selling them for a dollar seventy-nine, a buck seventy-nine. See Metallica. Of course, it sold out in minutes. But uh, yeah, my hearing hasn't been right since. But uh, yeah, it's uh, been a long time ago. Now, I, I'm I'm going to get a little bit into these flat sticks. Uh, originally, when they built these buildings with their flat roof design. Um, I kind of get it. Uh, they did it to build them. They were quicker and cheaper to build. Uh, they really didn't have to put that V-shaped roof on them anymore. Uh, but uh, as you can guess, watch your heads here on my right. Just a little windy today. Uh, they found out in a big, big, big hurry, especially when they were living in one, uh, then when it started to rain, uh, they ended up leaking a lot. Does anybody want to be a bus driver in this city? Yeah. Labine had a full set of hair, our driver up to last year, yeah, oh yeah. All right, so they did change these designs a bit, and I'm going to give you some examples here. Uh, when we get to this next intersection, on my right hand side see how these buildings look like they have a flat roof but uh, if you look they've raised the top part of it up and it now hides a v-shaped roof in behind it uh, they started doing that in the late 1860s and that particular design is called Italian naughty and again they did this because while well, they they were just leaking a lot now I'm going to show you a beautiful Queen Anne uh, it is a painted lady as well. It's called Seattle Block, and it was completed in 1896. This one is a little different, though. Uh, if you look, you're going to notice that there's different shades of brown with copper and gold mixed in with it. When they use these color designs, uh, these are actually preferred to be called uh, gingerbread houses, although they are still painted ladies. There's a crow there. <sighs> yeah. Thinking about Bodega Bay where the movie Birds was filmed. Um, uh, for, you can still see that house at Bodega Bay, but unfortunately you can't go in. It's actually owned. Uh, it's a private individual that, who lives in it that lives there. But If anybody's seen the movie, you'll know what I'm talking about. <laughs> All right. Uh, he also filmed uh, the movie Vertigo here in the city as well. Now, I'm going to get a little bit into these older buildings here. And I'm just going to give you a crash course 101. Uh, I'm a little bit of a history nut. I'm kind of nerdy on it. I, I won't get into detail with it because I don't want to bore anybody, put them to sleep. But a Victorian uh, with a V-shaped roof uh, originally were being built in the early 1800s. Then the flat roof designs, which we call flat sticks, mid-1800s. And then the ones with the 
pointed roof like a birthday hat are Queen Anne's late 1800s to early 1900s. However, you can build a Victorian styled building in any era. Uh, Victorian styled building that was built in the mid 1800s has a bit of a V-shaped roof at the top, but in behind it, it is a flat roof like the flat sticks. Uh, if it is a Victorian styled building that's built 1900 and up, they're actually called Edwardians rather than Victorians after King Edward. And the reason that is, is uh, if you own a Victorian built in the early 1800s, it's actually going to be worth more money than a Victorian built in the early 1900s. So different the century apart from one another. Edwardians are Victorian style buildings, but built in the 1900s were Victorians early 1800s. Nobody went to sleep yet? Okay, good. I could get more into it, but yes. Uh, you'll actually see uh, that cathedral up there. That is New St. Mary's Church. Uh, it was completed about 1972. It's kind of interesting. Uh, it's designed to kind of look like the Pope's hat, which I guess it does in a bit. But you see the black stripes that go up the top? It actually does it on the top of it. If you were closer to that, it's actually stained glass. So as the sun uh, rises in the east and sets in the west, it shines through that stained glass and you get all these different colors uh, in that cathedral. And uh, we're going to be coming up to our Civic Center UN Plaza, where City Hall is located at. And after that, uh, Union Square. I was talking to a gentleman earlier about Union Square. It's probably where you want to get off at. All right. Uh, Civic Center is where our City Hall Asian Art Museum opera ballet symphony hall and majority of our government buildings are all located at uh here on my right uh this is our opera house and right across the road from our opera house uh you're going to see our city hall uh that dome the top of that that's actually gold plated as well and the architect uh, for our city hall uh, is actually a gentleman by the name of Arthur Brown. Uh, this is actually the second city hall in that location. And you're going to see a set of flags. Uh, the first one with the bear on it, it's a grizzly bear monarch. That's our state flag, American flag. And then you'll see the flag with yellow trim. It looks like an eagle on it. Uh, that is actually our county flag. Um, I, I want to explain something about that flag. It is not an eagle. Uh, I would say uh, between 1850 and 1860, um, our downtown area anyway, probably burnt to the ground about five or six times. Again, uh, all the buildings were made of wood. They're all close together. Our fire department, nothing like it is today, had buckets of water and hope for the best. So that is actually a phoenix rising out of the flames. It's on our county flag. And again, our Asian Art Museum right there. Uh, over a billion dollars worth of art. Uh, for you folks that like casinos, uh, where those people are standing, uh, that's the, called the gambler's bus. So ride. it's very loud on the way up. Lots of people, yeah, 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 but uh, leaving the casino, coming back to the city, it's really quiet, really quiet. All right.
Again, uh, I'd say about 80% of our public transportation runs on electricity. Uh, you saw that other bus go by us with all that stuff on top of it. Again, that's an electric bus as well. Now, this building straight ahead of us. All right, there we go. Um, do -do -do. Now, this building right across the road uh, is our federal building. Test. 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 Test, test, all right. I'm back. All right. 
Sorry about the inconvenience there. Electrical tape and duct tape. It's good enough for NASA. It's good enough for me. All right. Now we're actually coming up to Union Square, folks. Uh, again, for you folks getting off here at Union Square. Uh, if you're going to go to Chinatown or North Beach or end up right back at Fisherman's Wharf, uh, just stay on. Uh, again, a couple things I'll mention while the light is red. Uh, Wells Fargo was actually established in this city in 1852, uh, as well as Levi's Jeans. Although they didn't start making them out of denim until about 20 years later in the 1880s. And if you folks are down here again and want to venture up far enough, see that uh, psychic right there? There's a girl there named Mary. And I got to tell you, Mary's worth seeing. Uh, my sister, about five years ago, went and saw Mary there. And Mary told her she was going to marry Rich. She got married last year to a guy named Rich. <laughs> True story. All right, now uh, Union Square actually officially gets its name uh, just before the Civil War broke out in 1860. Uh, they actually held pro-Union rallies there, and uh, they've been calling it Union Square ever since. So. Uh, we're actually coming up towards Union Square. Uh, again, for you folks that need to get to Chinatown or North Beach or the Wharf, just stay on. Uh, once again, my name is uh, Don, uh, your tour guide, and uh, Labine, our wonderful, wonderful driver, you guys, through these streets. Uh, if you enjoyed the tour, uh, which I really hope you did, you folks were a lot of fun, uh, mention us on TripAdvisor. Uh, we also do have a little tip jar down there uh, by the door. If you do want to leave us a tip or gratuity, I'd be greatly appreciated, whatever you think is fair. But uh, more importantly, um, I really hope you just had a great time and uh, you got to learn uh, some fascinating history uh, about our city here by the bay. And uh, thank God it's a little warmer today. And if anybody hasn't rode a cable car yet, uh, you can actually catch it right here at Union Square. On this track going up, it takes you up the hill back to Fisherman's Wharf. Just catch it right in the middle of the road uh, at the corner of Union Square. For you folks getting off here as well, uh, please be careful getting down the stairs. Uh, make sure you're hanging on to the rails. Uh, we're just going to wait for the light to change here, and then uh, we're just going to cross the road. Um, just an interesting note, while I'm waiting for the light to change, uh, the Western St. Francis Hotel right across the road uh, did survive the 06 earthquake. It was built in 1904. However, uh, the UN started in our city. It's now in New York City, but the first UN meeting, the building wasn't built yet. Uh, there were over 600 delegates from around the world that held their first meeting uh, here at the Western St. Francis Hotel. For you folks getting off, enjoy the rest of your day as well.